Good evening and welcome to Mum, McLoon and Maui. And uh, welcome to uh, another Monday night conference. Today we're up to seminar number 16. The date is June the 13th, 2011. So let's get going. Uh, Jerry, did I ever tell you about Arakawa? No, how do you spell the name? A R A K A W A. He was a famous conce conceptual artist. So he became celebrated as, a, as an artist in Japan, but he told me the story. He, he had no money. He knew Yoko Ono in Japan at art school or whatever scene was going on in Tokyo that he was part of in the 50s. He arrives in New York City with one phone number that his art teacher in Japan had given him. It's Marshall Duchamp's uh, phone number. And he doesn't know, he knows of him, knows he's significant, but he doesn't know him. He calls him up. And uh, from the airport, and Duchamp says, come on over. So he comes over, he meets Duchamp and hangs out with him for a while, I don't know, a month, week or something. And uh, I guess he talks to Marcel Duchamp about his art ideas. Well, one day, uh, Marcel Duchamp says, here, you stay here, Arakawa. I'm going to uh, go see something in the other room. So he goes in the other room, then he comes back in, and he tells Arakawa, Arakawa to come back into the other room. Arakawa goes into the other room. He's just arrived. He's a young art student trying to connect with something. He walks into the other room, and there's all five Rockefeller brothers with checks for Arakawa to make art. <laughs> that, you mean Duchamp arranged that? Yeah. Duchamp talked to this kid who had the guts or the connection to call him up, liked the kid. He had, I don't think he had any artwork brought with him. He decides to make a big deal out of the kid, and the Rockefeller brothers follow Duchamp's line, come, and they offer these checks to Arakawa, and he's got to come up with some art. And he did. Now there's Rockefeller hanging out with Duchamp, because they know Duchamp knows what's going on. Duchamp is a, a networking art collector, secret artist making a great artwork that doesn't reveal until after he's dead, but he's apparently you know, not in the art world since the 30s. But he's a close friend of Peggy Guggenheim and, and that world in France. He brings all the Surrealists over to help create that Surrealist gallery uh, in New York in 43 that Peggy Guggenheim made. And Peggy is married to Max Ernst. And if you read my diaries, you'll see uh, the night she was at the party where the, the title of Phoenix Lake was discovered in December of 1938. She's at that party. Good friend of Duchamp and, and Joyce, and that's how Joyce, James Joyce, would know stuff about Duchamp to put in fitting his weight. Anyways, uh, here you have Nelson Rockefeller. He is hanging out with the guy who's going to make the big patterns on the on the popular level of culture, highbrow version of popular culture, right? Or highbrow version of the Gutenberg Galaxy. The, the, the Rockefellers. That's the where they established their elitism. So they got to hang out with Duchamp. And whoever Duchamp says is a nice artist, uh, they get it. It actually goes along with uh, a line I have on our blurb for tonight's event. There is nothing more bourgeois than wanting not to appear bourgeois, Andy Warhol. Right. And uh, that was first uttered by um, Wyndham Lewis in the 20s. How did Wyndham say it the exact same way or differently? He had the same message. He, he was sick of these rich people like Peggy. Now, he's, ta he's commenting on the very process I'm telling you about. You have Peggy Guggenheim and these other rich people doing what they call slumming in Bohemia. These are rich people who get time in the 20s. They don't have to work to go and hang out with artists and make art themselves. And he, he writes about in The Art of Being Ruled and uh, probably Time in Western Men, he writes and complains about these idiotic artists, these idiotic uh, wealthy people pretending to be artists. And he called them Apes of God. That's what the novel Apes of God is all about. Remember Captain Beefheart's favorite book, which he didn't read. He had read to him and, by his wife. But here's Lewis putting down the... the uh, and how does Lewis counter that? He says the Cubists, the Surrealists are doofuses because they are working in the art studio making painting for galleries and collectors. That's not the way to be an art today. artist today. You've got to hang out at City Hall. You've got to design and program the environment. And he wrote a book about that in 1919. So he dissed the whole art world, and, but still had a role for the artist, who he thought was represented unique perception and, and necessary for functioning and design in the programming the environment. 